Okay, so I recently tried PinOS on my Raspberry Pi 400. I've done lots of videos on PinOS in the past. Uh, I'm now trying Berry Boot, which is another way of adding multiple operating systems to one SD card. Uh, and in the case of Berry Boot, you can also use an SSD drive, but you still have to use your SD card for the boot up. PinOS does everything from an SSD drive or a USB drive, so a little bit different. But Berry Boot is a bit more flexible in the way that it allows you to add a lot more operating systems and also to add and delete operating systems on the fly, uh, and uh, it just kind of deals with it. So one is not better than the other, they're just different, and I like both of them very much. Uh, I wish Berry Boot would work solely on a USB device, just for simplicity, but to be fair, it's not too much hassle to put in your boot drive as an SD card, and then you can have multiple operating systems on your SSD drive or USB stick. So uh, you can see here, I've already got four operating systems. The first three, Manjaro, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, which is the beta version, and Ubuntu 2010 desktop, which has only just come out. Uh, all of those were just you click on the operating system and it downloads it to your SD card or an SSD drive if that's what you're using. Super, super simple. Uh, but also Kali Linux was available from the test images, which uh, is a great way of trying new operating systems. And I've my Berry Boot playlist has got about 20 plus videos in it, so it's worth having a look at some of that. So let's launch into Kali Linux. So I'll click Exit. So I can click on Kali Linux now and click Boot. And the default username is Kali and the password is Kali. So hit Return. And Kali Linux isn't a, an operating system I use, but it does work very well, and uh, it's got loads of sort of hacker-style stuff in there if you're, if you're into that side of it. But one of the things I really liked about it was the undercover mode, which when you click on it, it uh, pretends to be Windows 10. So the idea is that it changes all of the operating system, all the icons. I show this in another video anyway, but it's still, it's still nice to see. So if we go into all applications, and... Kali undercover mode, it will switch back into the normal Kali Linux. So uh, if I come out of that and just do a shutdown, okay, so this time I'll go into Manjaro and hit boot. And I created a password for this, so you'll do it when you first boot it up, so whatever password you use to create that. And here we have Manjaro with all the apps. Again, I've covered these really in, in separate videos, but just to show you that there are multiple operating systems that you can have with Berry Boot. But uh, if we go into Firefox, so if we type in Berry Boot and images, you can see download Berry Boot images here. And uh, the one that I did a lot, I mean, I made loads of videos on these, was downloading testing images. So I used to check this very often. I haven't checked it for a while, uh, and that was how I found Kali Linux in there. Um, but uh, I used to check it very, very frequently, but there's always so much to cover on the Pi 4. Uh, and so you can see in here, these are test images, but uh, you might find that as a new operating system comes out, it will get adapted to Berry Boot. So a very good one there, Apple Pi OS is a great operating system, and uh, you can just click on that to download that file. But I'm not gonna do that now, because uh, I'm gonna do it in Raspberry Pi OS. So let's close this one down. And we'll do reboot. And I'm gonna pick Raspberry Pi OS and boot. Okay, so now I'm in ordinary Raspberry Pi OS. I have customized this a bit, so it looks a bit different, but it is ordinary Raspberry Pi OS, but the 64-bit version. Uh, so all I need to do now is uh, download the Berry Boot image uh, and put that on another SD card. So I'll show you how it's all set up. So if we go to Berry Boot. There you go, Berry Boot version two. Look for a download, it's this zip here. Click on that. And you see your download will start automatically. So in my case, it hasn't automatically started downloading. It did last time. So I'm gonna click on problems downloading and let's pick another server. So let's just, uh, let's pick that one in Germany. So now it looks like it's working properly. Hopefully it's not gonna be in German. We'll soon find out. So you can see it's downloading down the bottom here, 45.5 megabytes. Okay, so now let's finish downloading. Let's close down the web browser. And uh, I'm gonna put my SD card reader with an SD card in it into a USB socket on the Pi. And hit cancel. Uh, so now what I wanna do is format that SD card because I don't know what's on there. Uh, there will be an operating system. So if I click on Raspberry Pi Imager, uh, which you'll find on the left-hand side under 
accessories and imager. You don't need to do this, but it's just a very easy way of erasing your SD card. So hit erase, choose SD card. So the uh, SD card reader is the one I want, which is this one. And hit right. And yes, make sure you're wiping the right SD card. Okay, so that's all done. So now what we want to do is open up a folder uh, and one of them we're going to do is the SD card, which is this 31 gig SD card. You can see there's nothing on there. And the next one we're going to do is the downloads folder. So click on that. You need to unzip Berry Boot. So right click and extract here. Then you can delete that zip. And then press Control A to select all of those and drag them over to this window, which is basically dragging it over to the newly formatted SD card. There you go, that's all done. So let's close that one down, and I can close this down as well. Now all I need to do is reboot. Now, you need to decide before you reboot, are you gonna store your operating systems on a USB device, so an SSD or a USB stick, uh, or are you gonna store it on the SD card? For simplicity, I'm just gonna do it on the SD card. I've got other videos showing you how to install it onto a USB stick but uh, I'm gonna do it on an SD card in this case. So I'm gonna shut down, I'm gonna put the SD card from the reader in the Pi 400 and boot up from that. Okay, so this is how it starts up. Now you can test your keyboard by just pressing some keys. Uh, you can, in this case, disable the overscan because I can see the green lines at the top and the bottom uh, and I'm gonna use a wired network. If you clicked on Wi-Fi, it would ask you to log in. If you don't log in and you're only using Wi-Fi, you won't be able to install any operating systems. So obviously do whichever is appropriate for you. Uh, the keyboard and everything is all right for me. So I'm going to click OK. And then it asks me what it wants to use to install the operating system to. Now, if I plug in a USB device, it will show up here. But I'm going to use my SD card, which is this one here. Uh, you can also use network storage. I've never done it for Berry Boot. I didn't really want to run an operating system from a network, but if you do want to, then the option is there. So let's hit Format, and that's preparing it for Berry Boot. So in this case, I'm going to choose Ubuntu because I find it faster for unzipping certain things. Uh, I don't know if it's always the case, but uh, I'm going to do Ubuntu. That's the only one I'm going to, going to click onto here initially because the other operating systems I'm going to download separately, but by using Ubuntu. So I'm going to click OK. And then we just need to wait for that to all download. OK, so you can see installation complete. Press OK to reboot and follow the normal setup procedure, language and things like that. And hit continue. Okay, so now let's all boot it up. Let's go back into the web browser and do a search for Berry Boot Images. Okay, so let's click on this one and scroll through and just double check that the operating system you're looking at is uh, specified for working on Pi 4. Now I'm on a Pi 400 at the moment, so most Pi 4 things should work fine. So Twister OS is a great operating system, so I'm gonna download that. Uh, so let's click on that and it should start to download automatically. Press OK to save the file. OK, so now that's downloaded. You can see it here. So show all downloads. And this is the one we want. So if we right click on it and open containing folder. Let's just close everything else down. Right click on the file and extract here. And it often looks like nothing's happened, but after a while you'll get this image. And if you right click on it, uh, in the case of this, it's 3.9 gig. So I know that's finished now and there's no progress indicator here anymore. So I know that's all unzipped. So that needs to go onto a USB stick. So let's plug in a USB stick. So I can open up my USB stick. And I can drag Twister OS into that. And if you click on this, it will give you a little progress indicator to show you how long it's going to take. Okay, so now that's all copied over to my USB stick. Here's my USB stick. You can see the two images are there. Uh, what I can do now is just restart. I can leave everything as is. So I can leave the USB stick in, leave the SD card in. And hit restart. Okay, so in the edit menu, let's click on that. And then add OS, you press and hold. So left click with the mouse and hold it down. And then you've got copy OS from USB stick. 
and there you go. So this is Kelly Linux that I had on my previous one and Twister OS which I've just downloaded. So click on that and hit open and that will copy the file over to your SD card. So when that's all finished it will look like this and you can see we've got two operating systems here now. Uh, if I was to press exit, now that it's booting up just click on Twister and hit boot. And here is Twister OS, so I'll just skip all of that. Uh, with Twister OS, it has something quite unique, which is where you can change the theme, uh, and it changes the whole theme. So if I hit next, you can see I can choose a Mac OS theme. I've got Nighthawk, got Raspbian XP, Raspbian 95, or Twister OS, which it's on now. I quite like Raspbian X, uh, because it gives you the whole uh, bar down the bottom in the sort of Windows 10 style. So if you click on that, hit enter to continue, same thing again, press uh, Twister and then boot. There you go, so a very nice theme. And also if you want to search for something, so say you were searching for something like g -parted, you can just start typing it and uh, click on it and it will come straight up as long as you put in your password, which is usually Raspberry on Twister OS. There you go, and there's g -parted, which shows me all my drives that are connected. So you can see I've got my USB stick plugged in, but everything is running from this 32 gig SD card. And if you like the look of Twister OS, you can run it on a, uh, a PC or a Mac. I run it on my Mac before I've got videos on that. And also the Pi 4, it tells you when the latest download is, is in, and uh, this will tell you the change log, so what's new. Updated the Mesa Vulkan driver, which is great, so that's 3D graphics updated Chromium and Chromium Media Edition to version 84, updated Chromium, yeah, so that's definitely worth doing an update to. And if you want to see more of what Berry Boot has to offer, just type in Berry Boot and Lee PSP video, and you'll see that it will come up with a playlist, but also various different things, converting images that aren't even available, uh, and uh, SSD installation of various different things. So uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.